Um, does anyone else, anyone else like to share their pig Latin solution? I think that was maybe one, one of the least common. I kind of want to share it because I have an issue with the very last test. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so my approach to this got a little blown up because I basically started off of the premise. And then as I realized the complexity of some of these tests, um, I had to add in functionality for checking for punctuation, capital letters, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I kind of have it in the back of my mind, there's a way to consolidate some of this. Um, but I'll walk you through what I have. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm splitting based on spaces and creating an array from the string. Okay. This is, this is checking to see if any of those elements in the array have a new line. And that's where I'm running into some problems, but we'll get to that. And then I'm assigning a variable to the vowels. Um, wasn't really sure if we were supposed to use Y uniquely, but I left it out. So so now I'm iterating over that array of words. And the way I've looked for new line is I've just made it its own word up here. Um, so if we're as we're iterating through it, if the word is a new line, just continue, which means skip all this code and, and go to the next index to enumerate through. Um, I'm tracking whether or not the word has an uppercase letter in it here. Um, or actually, that's just setting up the value. I change that later. So this was just kind of a hack way to check whether the last character in the word is punctuation. Okay. We're going to strip it from the word um, and add it back later. Okay. Uh, this is just checking if the first letter is capitalized, setting the flag to true because we're going to capitalize the first letter later. Okay. Now we need to determine whether or not the word begins with a consonant or a vowel. If it begins with a consonant, um, We're setting this J value to zero because uh, if there's subsequent consonant letters, we want to track how many in a row there are. And then as an edge case, I just threw in this line. If, um, if the first letter is a consonant, then we'll come through to this conditional. Um, and it'll check to see if the subsequent letter is a U. If so, just set J to two and what all this J nonsense is about is where we actually go to build the consonant based word or consonant starting word. And this is just a set of um, slices. So we're, let's see. So starting with the first letter after the end of consonants in a row, we're just gonna take the rest of the string we're going to add on the first character. And in case it's capitalized, I'm just setting it to lower. And then we're going to take the, we're going to skip the first letter and take a substring from the first letter to the end of our consonants. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would uh, choose a different variable name probably. Value is pretty pretty generic and then you also have value and then you're reassigning it so it just makes it a little hard to follow when you got you yeah. so here's where we're assigning the first letter to uppercase if it was flagged previously and then that's how the constant starting words are handled if it's a vowel it's pretty straightforward you just add a y to the end of it in any punctuation okay um so assign that value to 
to your point, this is where it gets kind of confusing. Um, assign that value to the that spot in the index of the list of of words. And once you do that for each word, looping through it again and again, join them all back together and return. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is, I mean, this is one of those uh, where you, know, you can get a basic solution going, but getting a, a really robust solution where you're covering all you know, possible edge cases and you know, it, it, it's difficult to, to think of every possible edge case I mean, what about uh, you know non alpha you know non English characters or I mean th there's all kinds of potential edge cases or someone's using a lot of spaces so there's there's a question of you know how much how much do you actually want to account for right but yeah this is yeah this is good. I don't know if you want to get into the issues I was having or if we're too short on time. Uh, yeah, it's six now. I can uh, stay after and troubleshoot a little bit, but um, yeah. Um, I don't think we can uh, troubleshoot live. Um, let me um, just real quick, I'll also uh, just show my solution real quick. So my solution does not, it's, it's kind of lazy to be honest. Um, it doesn't account for a lot of edge cases, but I'll, sh I'll show you just from like a design perspective. Um, so I did this in uh, JavaScript and I made it a class. So we haven't, we haven't really used classes in JavaScript so far. Um, but you can do that and it's, you know, if you know how to do it in Python, it's not really that different. So you have a class um, and then this constructor is like the init in Python. So there's this thing, it's called constructor and that's what you have to call it, but it will, you know, run basic setup for you when you create an instance. So this is like the, the init in Python. So, uh, you know, there's lots of things that I could improve here, but uh, the basic idea is you create an instance with whatever this is, and then there's this um, kind of runner function that will get calls. So here I'm getting the input string, and then I'm just immediately calling this function, which is gonna produce the answer. So I'm, I'm kind of treating it like a, it's a little machine, but I only really care about, you know, the value I put in and the value that I want to get out. So I'm really not, this is like all internal stuff basically. And, and you know, uh, that's just one way of doing it. Okay, so I call this kind of main, main method or runner method or whatever called translate. And this gets the input, it splits it on strings. Again, there's lots more complicated tokenization stuff you can do. This is just a very basic implementation. So we split it to get an array of you know, words. Then I'm gonna map over all of these, I'm calling map. Uh, and then this is basically gonna transform every word into you know, uh, a pig Latin thing. And then joining it back and then trimming out any white space. Uh, and then that will be the, the ultimate answer. So this iterate over input, couple, you know, there's, there are definitely edge cases they didn't account for. I didn't account for QU and stuff like that. Um, but the one, you know, some, some stuff you, some like obvious stuff you should take care of, you know, does it start with a capital letter or not? Uh, and is there punctuation? And, and this punctuation flag is basically an artifact of how we tokenize the word initially. So we're not, we're not, tokenizing very well, to be honest. But uh, because of that, we have to worry about punctuation. So uh, we're going to get these flags and, and, and they're just going to be like markers. So every, every word is going to say like, 
do you start with a capital letter and do you end with a punctuation mark? Um, so this is kind of indirect, uh, but by the way, does anyone know what, what this syntax is? I'm calling a method and then I'm getting two variables out of it. So you can do this in uh, JavaScript. It's a, a doer feature, it's a destructuring. So I'm calling this and because I'm returning two things here, I can just immediately assign them to their own variable. So I can assign these and I can use them just like regular variables immediately after. Okay, so all, all I'm doing here is checking is this the first letter, is the first letter capitalized? Is not so this is maybe a little bit ridiculous but you know I, I wanted to split this up into different methods it could be independently tested instead of having one giant thing okay so i i check if there's capital or punctuation and then from there I, i'm going to do the real work which is translate word this function right here and again i'm not saying this is the best implementation it's not um and there's some edge cases missing but uh here all, all we're doing is like splitting and slicing so I, i'm i'm going to take chunks so what, what i'm going to ultimately return here is i'm going to look for a vowel so if i have a word here like um train the slice from vowel is going to be starting at tr right and then sorry it'll be the a i n because we're starting at the first vowel and going to the end of the word. And then we'll add that to uh, TR, which is everything up until the first vowel. And then AY, and then if there's a, a punctuation mark. So if I passed in train, that, that's what it would be. If I passed in nothing, that would be plus you know an empty string, which is why that's there. And so all of all, all the rest is just looking for a vowel and then chopping up a word based on the vowel. So um, yeah, again, not the best implementation, but I just wanted to show you uh, a class in JavaScript. All right, um, so we're past time, so I'll let you guys go. If there are any questions, I'll stick around. Not really.